racing games are an excellent genre of games, and to be honest with you guys, I've probably been playing some of these games longer than you've been alive. And of course, started with Super Mario Kart. I remember going over to my cousin's house who had a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis, must be nice, and playing this game with him for hours and hours and hours. And of course, as time went on, we've gotten so many awesome, iconic kart racing games. The N64 era was really a great time for kart racing games. You had games like Mario Kart 64, and of course, Diddy Kong Racing. But during that time frame, the PlayStation 1 also had Crash Team Racing. Now, I did not have a PlayStation 1 at the heyday of the system, so I never really experienced Crash Team Racing. I played it later on in life, actually emulating it on my PSP Go, and I thought it was a pretty solid game. So to see Crash Team Racing come back with a remaster for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One sounded absolutely awesome. Looking at kart racers for the Nintendo Switch, there's a lot of great games for it. You have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which of course is the granddaddy, the father figure of all other kart racing games that are currently on the market. We recently had Team Sonic Racing that we reviewed on the channel that I actually thought was pretty fun. A bit bare bones, but it was still pretty fun. So Crash Team Racing seemed like another great game for the Nintendo Switch when it came to kart racers. And honestly, it's, it's not. Like, I have not been this disappointed in a game in quite a while. This game is a remaster. It should be great. Let's look at other remasters that Activision has done. Things like the Crash Insane Trilogy. Fantastic stuff. Spyro Reignited. Fantastic stuff. And now we have Crash Team Racing racing disappointing. So what is so disappointing about Crash Team Racing? Why am I so against this game? It's going to be a weird video because honestly, there's a lot of stuff I really like, but the main factors that I detract from this game are definitely worth talking about. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about Crash Team Racing and why it's a huge disappointment. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards. So for this video, I want to start out with the good and then segue into the bad. And shockingly, like I said, there's a lot of good in this game. Let's start out with the graphics of the game. I think the game looks really damn good, honestly. I have played this game both in dock mode and in handheld mode, and I think the game looks great. Some of the levels are very creative, the racetracks have a lot of life to them, and there's little intricacies that you see during some levels, things like weather effects, things like mud flying up and getting on your tires and stuff. A really visually pleasing game. I think the game runs at a very solid frame rate as well. The game is locked at 30 frames per second, but that's across the board on all platforms. Even the PS4 and the Xbox One X, I believe, are running at 30 frames per second. But really, it's good because in this case, there are no frame rate drops. The game runs very smooth, and it had no experiences with any sort of issues with frame rate with this game. It does look a little bit worse in handheld mode. You might remember Crash Bandicoot uh, Insane Trilogy had a bit of a fuzz to it, and this game does have a bit of a fuzz to it when you're playing in, in handheld mode. It's not nearly as bad as the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, but it is noticeable, but after your eyes sort of adjust to it, it's honestly not that big of a deal. I really like the levels, I really like the way the levels are laid out, and I really like the graphics in the game. I think they did a fantastic job of making this game look like a modern game, and it looks great running on the Nintendo Switch. The audio is a bit of a mixed bag, you know, it's pretty decent, but I don't think there's any real standout songs. Like I said, the Crash Bandicoot uh, games never really resonated with me, it wasn't a series I grew up with, so I don't have too much emotional attachment to the music of the game, but the music that is in the game is pretty decent enough. It definitely sounds like Crash Bandicoot stuff, and there are some voice samples in the game as well. They all sound clean, they all sound pretty crisp. Content-wise, this game has a ton of content. Like, there is an astronomical amount of content in this game. Of course, the main mode of the game is the adventure mode, in which you have sort of a hub world that you are driving around in and going from different racetracks to different racetracks in order to compete and get in first place, and then you unlock subsequent racetracks. It's kind of like Diddy Kong Racing's Overworld. Not quite as imaginative, I feel, but it definitely gets the job done. It's definitely nicer than just going from track to track, I feel. I like being able to zip around a little area and seeing different things in the area, and it's pretty fun just to meander around in. And of course, the adventure mode is a pretty decent length. After completing a set number of races, you then get a boss battle key, which allows you to do a boss battle race. It's not really combat-based, it's more just driving-based, avoiding different projectiles and different enemy item drops that they are dropping on the area, and then you unlock another area of the map to explore. There's not much to actually explore in these areas,
this, but it is nice. It does help the game progress, and it's pretty decent. Like I said, it does definitely play into the visual aesthetic of the game. I think the overworld and island look very, very nice, so it's pretty solid. Aside from the adventure mode, you have so many different types of game modes, it's honestly pretty breathtaking. There's something called artifact mode, where you're basically racing around on tracks and having to complete these tracks in a certain amount of time in order to unlock artifacts. There's different boxes on these levels that have different times. So if you pick up a box that says three, the clock will pause for three seconds, allowing you to zip around the course and get things done in a quicker manner. And really, those things are essential to pick up in order to beat the artifact time and unlock additional artifacts in the game. So that's pretty cool. There's a bunch of different single player modes. There's cut mode where you can do a standard four race cup, or you can extend it a bit more. You can do single races, of course. And there's even a battle mode in this game for local or online multiplayer. And the battle mode is actually pretty fun. There's a lot of different game modes you could do. You could do standard stuff like blowing up enemies and having to kill a certain amount of enemies in a certain amount of time. There's certain things like life restrictions where you have a set number of lives. There's capture the flag, a great variety of stuff. And considering this is a budget $40 game, I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of content you get in this game. There's also in-game currency as well by accomplishing things like finishing first in races or placing anywhere in a race or doing well in a battle mode. You unlock gold. And then you could go into an area and unlock additional stuff for your car. It's basically cosmetic stuff, basically cosmetic stuff for characters, but still, it's a nice touch. It keeps you wanting to play the game, and the content is actually recycled every few hours so that there's fresh content in there for you to unlock, which keeps you wanting to play the game. So there's a ton of different modes in the game. The game looks really good, and the sound is pretty decent. Seems like this is a winner, right? What's the problem with this game? The gameplay. The gameplay, the gameplay, the gameplay. You people thought rubber banding and Mario Kart on Wii was bad. You have seen nothing. You have seen nothing. First and foremost, let's talk about the gameplay, shall we? When you're playing in the adventure mode of the game, the game automatically defaults to a medium difficulty setting. So the default difficulty setting shouldn't be all that crazy, right? But you're wrong. Like these, these kart racers that you're going against are absolutely batshit insane. And they all march to the beat of their own drum. No matter what you do to these people, you will not be stopping them. Let's take, for instance, this clip right here. So I'm racing against this guy and I hit him with an item. And what happens? He kind of spins out a little bit and then just stays in front of me. How? How? When I get hit with an item, my whole progress is stampeded and thwarted. I'm going from first to eighth in a matter of seconds, yet you hit a, a people with items in this game and it does nothing. The game has this weird AI where it has someone who is going to finish first in that race, or at least in the top two. And every course, it's a different character. You'll see one character be first and just be like Jesus Christ mode and at the front of the pack the whole race, and then the next race they're in eighth place because the game just has this broken AI system that's just absolutely atrocious. The items, some of them are completely pointless. If you're hitting people with missiles and stuff and it does nothing, what's the point of the missile? I could count the amount of items that are worthwhile, and that's really the little mask thing. You get the mask thing, and then you drive around, and you can't get hit, and you get a bit of a speed boost. Talking about speed boost, good lord, the AI is programmed on the difficulty to adjust their speed. So on medium difficulty, whoever's in first will have more speed than you, no matter what you do. You can pick up the little apples on the map in order to increase your overall speed, but your overall speed will will never be better than the first place competitor. So you have to drift. And drifting in this game, I don't know. It just doesn't feel all that intuitive to me. I get it, you have to do the triple boost system. Basically, you start your drift and then you hit a button that is the opposite corresponding button in order to keep your drift alive. And you get a three tiered system and on three, you get a huge speed boost. That definitely helps. You have to master this in order to progress in this game whatsoever. If you do not master this, you're not gonna go anywhere in this game. You're not gonna beat any of the missions. You're you're not going to beat any of the adventure mode. You have to master this. It's just so much random stuff in this race in any of the races that there's no consistency. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And it just absolutely takes you out of the game so much. It is so frustrating. There are missions and there are adventure mode levels where I will have no problem finishing in first place. I'll do it first try. There are missions where I'll have to play for like 30 minutes in order to just finish in first place. And you have to finish in first place in order to progress in the modes. I just don't get how broken this AI is. It, when items and things like that are just completely pointless in order to use and they're not going to help you in the race because the AI is just essentially going to cheat and rubber band, what's the freaking point of having items in the game? And the online mode. Why is there an online mode in this game? Because it's a racing game. Online racing games are fun, right? This is the most broken online mode I have ever played in a racing game and that is absolutely no hyperbole whatsoever. Let me show you guys a little clip of the online mode racing. So I did a couple different online races 
races and this was the best I got. Basically, the characters and the people that you're racing against just sort of clip around. Sometimes they pop in on the map, sometimes they don't, and you just get a random place, it seems like. The uh, online is completely broken. I've heard that it doesn't even work on the PS4 and the Xbox One right now. Why the hell are you shipping a game that has online racing where the online doesn't work? Is this game not done yet? Is this game need more time to bake? Do we need to put it back in the oven for a little bit and let it actually get warm so that it's a game that we can actually play and enjoy? If you're playing this game for the online, do not buy it because you cannot play the online right now. Sure, they're going to update it with a patch or something like that, but why the hell should I have to wait for a patch? This should be available on day one. It's a racing game. I have never played an online racing game that had so many problems. You're getting hit by items. I was in fourth place and I finished the race and for some reason I finished in fifth place. Just absolutely madness. Absolute insanity. Maybe that's where they got the name for the Crash Insane Trilogy with insanity there because they knew how broken this game was going to be. And my final main complaint about this game are the load times in between races. Load times can take up to 40 seconds to even a minute sometimes. And it's like, what is going on here? I'm playing on the cartridge, so everything is reading from the cartridge. This is not a digital download. So maybe the digital download edition is a little bit snappier. But as far as reading it off the cartridge, I don't think it should take this long just to get into a race. It's just so many interesting things going on with this game. I think the game looks great. I love all the game modes in the game. The sound is fine, but just the actual gameplay is not good. It's like they didn't really refresh it enough from the PS1 game to make it a more modern game. Sometimes when you even have these homing missiles, they just go completely right by the enemy. It's like, what the hell's the point of these items? It's just absolutely craziness. And of course, these things can be adjusted. You can adjust the difficulty down to easy if you prefer to do it that way. But I like to play on the standard difficulty because I feel like that is the way the game develops intended you to play this game. They want you to play on medium because that is the standard difficulty that is offered. So if the standard difficulty is this broken, I can't even imagine hard mode. Like, no, you can keep that hard mode. It's just such a shame, honestly, because it has so much good stuff going for it. It's just the actual racing in the game. The fact that the online does not work. The fact that the AI is some of the cheapest AI ever in a video game ever, ever, ever. Arcades are weeping at how cheap this AI is. They're like, wow, I wish I could have gotten away with that. Think of all the quarters we could have got if we would have done a Crash Team Racing arcade game. Just absolute insanity with this AI in the game and it's a shame because it just ruins the whole game experience. I'm sure it'll get better with patches, but as of right now Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Team Sonic Racing are much better choices if you're a kart racing fan. They're fun, they're good to look at, and they play great. That's the main thing with the kart racing game. If it doesn't play great, you can have the best graphics in the world and it just doesn't matter. And this is a perfect example of that. So Crash Team racing honestly just a huge disappointment on the nintendo switch i may check it out again once some subsequent patches come out but after about six hours with the game right now i have no reason to want to go back to it it's just the game itself is just not fun to me at all and the fact that it's just so broken in so many areas it's going to take a lot of patches and a lot of improvement to make this game a playable and a worthy kart racer alongside of games like mario kart 8 deluxe and of course team sonic racing so let me know in the comment section down below if you've been playing crash team racing or if you're going to wait to get more information on this game. Do you want to see if some patches come out? Do you want to see if they're going to be able to fix things? Because as of right now, it's almost an unplayable game, and that's really a shame to say. And thank you guys for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.